games always reward players and how can we create a rewarding system. So, in this video I'm going to show you how we can create a reward system using Good at Engine. So, here I have the project for my upcoming course. So, if you want to create a game that will tell a story, that will engage players through the journey of a story that you want to tell, this course is for you. I will put a link in the description and in the pinned comment so that you can subscribe to the mailing list and get access to the files that we are going to create in this video. But here I have a mission, so you can see that I have uh, destroyed some large asteroids uh, quest. And I'm going to finish this quest real quick and I'll be right back. So I'm about to finish this quest. As soon as I finish, I want you to pay attention to my score at the top right corner of the screen. So as you can see, I increased my score to 1524. And if I keep going, I will increase my score even more. So if I collect this loot, so a loot system is something that I'm going to talk about in future videos because it's very interesting as well. But what does a reward system do? So games are systems of incentives and as such we need to create the incentives for players to go through the journey that we designed for them and to do that the main channel of communication between the game designer and the player is the incentives that we give to players so we want them to do some stuff and to avoid some stuff in that sense we have two major categories of incentives we have rewards and punishments and we have positive and negative rewards and positive and negative punishments so a positive reward is when we add a desirable thing to the system so for instance points health any resource really so money that players can invest in the character or in the gameplay and a negative reward is when we remove something undesirable from the system and a positive punishment is when we add something undesirable to the system and a negative punishment is when we remove something desirable from the system. So let's understand how we can do that using Good at Engine. Here I have my score singleton. So the score singleton is basically a game resource. So if you don't know what a game resource is, is a class that I created, a custom class that I created that helps me manage any resource from my game. So it can be health points, energy points, uh, lumber, money, gold, anything in the game really. If you want to know how you can implement that in your game and how you can use that, I'll put this link in the card so it goes to a health bar video where I teach you how you can create this game resource and how to implement it in a health bar. Here, the, the score singleton is basically a game resource. So if I open it, it will point to a game resource scene. But this is a very specific way to implement this scene because it also has a save load component and as you can see it saves the maximum amount and the current amount of score from the player that's it if you want to know about how you can implement this save load component i will also suggest you to watch this video where i teach you how you can create one of the most robust and flexible saving load system that i ever created going back here the, the score singleton I have to implement it using the globals so that every other class has access to this score singleton. What is a singleton? A singleton is a design pattern that allows classes to access a single instance of a class. It doesn't mean that this class will only have a single instance but it creates a single globally accessible instance of this class and this is what this project settings globals do so it it will turn an instance of a scene or a resource or something like that as a singleton that other classes can access this is important because uh, as you can see this is game a game resource so i'm not going into that if you want to know about it again i would suggest you to watch the health bars video but the major component of this score system is the score point. So the score point is this very simple class that accesses the score singleton, increases its maximum amount. This is just so I don't cap the player's score and it increases the player's score emitting a signal, a signal. This signal can be used to create those labels on the screen telling players how many points they just scored. 
So this is very convenient. And here I export a, a variable that is the points that this specific score point will increase in player's score. This allows me to use score points anywhere in my game. So from the looting system to the quest system. So if I open the game uh, level scene, at the very bottom here, I have this quest. And using a quest monitor, I'm going to talk about this quest system in future videos because I'm li really liking it. But here in the quest monitor, it monitors the quest status and it communicates to other classes uh, what is the current state of a class, meaning that I can communicate, I can notify when a quest just finished. When the quest finished, I communicate to the score point telling it to score. And here I have the score point. So anything can become a quest in that system because this is a component that I can attach to anything in this game. The importance of having a score point system, especially a rewarding system, is because we humans act upon incentives. And as I always say, games are systems of incentives. And as such, we guide players using these incentives. This is the main communication channel that game designers have with their players. Of course, we can use dialogues and more explicitly communication channels, but these are devices that we loan from other media. So a dialogue can be used in a book or in movies or in animated series or series. So in any drama, we can use dialogues. In any other media, we can use other stuff. Games specifically have this communication channel of incentives because we are co-authors of the player's journey. We try to guide them through this journey, but ultimately players are creating their own story. Players are creating their own narrative. And using a reward system is how we can tell players, hey, you just did something that I think that will be great, that will guide you through the goal that I want you to achieve. Keep doing that, do that more. This reward system in contrast to a punishment system is how we humans act because most people think that humans are not rational but we are completely rational we can lack information to uh, make our decisions and do some decisions that are not very intelligent for other people that do have this information but ultimately humans are mostly or 100 percent of the time rational we balance out the weight of our actions so that we can achieve the goal that we desire this is written by ludwig von mises in his praxeology theory so he stated he has the axiom that human action is intended and all humans act on this intent so this is why we have market which rewards our the players of our society for doing some valuable stuff so doing services and creating products and we have the criminal system that punishes them so when we incentivize positively a, a given action humans are more likely to do this action and when we create a negative incentive such as a punishment we are communicating they, that they should do less or they should avoid doing some action so this is how we use this reward system we can tell players hey you just did something that i like you to do that will help you achieve the goal that i propose actually i think that i'm going to recommend this for you because using hit and hurt boxes i will create, <laughs> recommend the combat system video right now we can actually create negative incentives so punishments so if players touch a given area let's say a spike or lava they will be negatively um negatively incentive incentivized to do it again they will lose some health and since health is a desirable resource players will be less likely to repeat the action so using a hit and hurt box system can be one way to implement punishment system as well if you want to get notified about the godot adventure essential scores subscribe to the mailing list so you don't miss the early access discount and also in the very post that i'm going to share you'll also be able to get all the files that I'm providing here. So the game resource files, the um, score point files, the score singleton, and the saving load system as well. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Keep developing and until the next time.